Hi folks, so welcome back to your second lesson on numeracy and physics, converting between units. We're going to be looking at converting between hours, minutes and seconds, and then you're going to be converting between grams and kilograms. Now, a wee point, um, I know some of you will be probably very good at that, especially looking at your previous assignment. So keep going, keep trying. It's important you show me you know how to do this because you'll be doing a lot of this when we come to do the actual physics, okay? This is the last numer numeracy lesson, and then we're gonna move on to the physics next week. So keep going, folks. I'm really pleased with what I've seen so far, okay? So you've got to just remember these. To convert hours into minutes, you multiply by 60. Minutes into seconds, you multiply by 60. And then hours to minutes to seconds, or hours just to seconds, you multiply by 60 and 60, okay? Really important you remember this because you're expected to be able to do this without any kind of reminders or any help. You are, of course, allowed to use a calculator. People always get this wrong between either multiplying by 60 or dividing by 60. So here's my top tip, okay? Usually, well, not usually, always, there are more minutes than there are hours, right? If you think about it, one hour is 60 minutes. There's 60 minutes to one hour. Same with seconds, there are more seconds than there are minutes. One minute is the same as 60 seconds, so there are always more seconds. So that's how I remember you have to multiply by 60, okay? So let's get into some examples here. And remember, with physics, it's actually quite straightforward because once you learn the process, it's a case of just applying the process each time. So four hours, how do we convert that? Pretty straightforward, folks. 4 times 60, which gives you 240 minutes, okay? And of course, you can use a calculator. You don't have to do this in your head. Are we correct? Well, remember I said to you, there are more minutes than there are hours. So we've got four hours and we've got 240 minutes. So that means we must be in the right direction. Second one, this one here, 3.5 times 60. You just multiply the whole thing, 3.5 by 60, and you get your answers in minutes, okay? So look at units to see what you can do next to convert. Here it's just hours to minutes because you can see we've only got hours here. We just need to do the time 60. What do I mean by this bit here? Well, you'll see that with the next example, which you can probably figure out already. Notice that each time I'm also including my units, which is minutes. That's really important in physics because you've got to tell people what quantity you are measuring, okay? And then the final example, pretty straightforward again, because you probably noticed you've got 20 minutes there, so you leave that as it is. But the seven hours we can convert into minutes by doing times 60 again. And then obviously at the end, to get the 20 minutes, we add that on so it becomes 440 minutes. So notice how we use the trick as before. Look at units to see what to do to convert it. In this case, 20 minutes is already in minutes, so we leave it and add it on at the end. Okay, a wee bit trickier now, because this is the one that people quite often get mixed up with the, the first one, which is if we're going the other way, i.e. minutes to hours, then you have to divide by 60, okay? Remember, if we multiply by 60 to get hours into minutes, you do the opposite if you're going backwards, so you divide instead of multiply. Minutes, seconds to minutes, again, you divide by 60. And then seconds to hours, you would do divide by 60, divide by 60. And my tip from before still works. Remember I said there are always more hours than minutes. Sorry, other way around, there are always more minutes than hours. So going back the way, your answer for hours must be smaller than minutes. Same with second and minutes. There are always more seconds than there are minutes. So if you're going to convert to minutes, you should have fewer num a smaller number than your original answer, okay? Okay, so let's look at some worked examples in this. And you might have picked up by now that we usually do a wee bit of theory, then we do some worked examples, then we do some questions. Now, in case you're thinking, is that all we do in the physics? The answer, of course, is no. Obviously, I would give you experiments, there'd be group work, there'd be other type of activities you do. It's just that at this point in time, because of the lockdown, 
we've got to do it this way so I know you're at least getting some kind of work, folks, okay? I promise you, once we get back into class, we'll start doing some uh, a range of different things and some experimental work as well. And I've got some crackers for you lined up. I really promise you it will be fun and interesting, okay? So back to this. How do we convert 1,200 seconds into minutes? Well, just like before, it's kind of the same process, but we're not doing multiply, we're doing divide, okay? So it's quite straightforward. 1,200, because it's in seconds, we just divide by 60. So that gives us an answer of 20 minutes. And again, you can use a calculator to do this. I don't expect to do it in your head, okay? Now, if you think you know how to do this, feel free to pause the video and just try the other two yourselves to see if you get the answer. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and explain the, the answers to you. So the next one, 300.5 seconds. Well, again, it's in seconds, so we divide by 60. And this one, it actually gives you 5.008 and a whole bunch of numbers. So I'm just going to round it to five minutes because that's essentially what it is, five minutes um, uh, if you round it to the nearest whole number. And it's, the tip's the same, as I say to you, you look at the units and then that tells you what you need to do to convert it into the units that you want. And in this case, it is divide by 60, right? Remember, there are more seconds than there are minutes, so your answer should be smaller than your original number, okay? Okay, so final example, one minute, 45 seconds. What's that in minutes? Again, feel free to pause the video and try this yourself before I take you through the answer. Um, and uh, here's the answer, folks. Now, very quick point. Um, why can we not just add these two to numbers together and just write 1.45 minutes? Okay, why is that wrong? Well, your maths teacher would probably tell you that these are in different units. So you cannot add things which are in different units. They have to be the same units. And the same is true for physics, okay? You've got to have the same units before you can add things together. So how do we convert the 45 seconds into minutes? You probably know this by now. You divide by 60, which gives us 0.75 minutes. Now, in this case, I'm not going to round it up because 0.75 is a kind of fairly easy number to recognize, and it's quite a reasonable size number. So we just add that on to one minute, which gives us 1.75 minutes as our answer. OK, uh, and notice how uh, you might think, well, um, is this less than what we had before? Well, remember, 0.75 is less than one. So that's less than 45. So we're on the right track, folks. So we're using the same trick as before, and we're just leaving the minutes at the end because it's already in the correct units. Okay, now moving on to the final one for today's lesson, um, and there's also one more slide after this, is converting grams into kilograms, and you simply divide by a thousand. Now, this one is one that people always get mixed up. People always think you have to multiply by a thousand to get to kilograms. Well, let's look at why that isn't right, folks, okay? So in this case, we are adding the prefix K. We're not getting rid of it like we, oh, pardon me. We're not getting rid of it like we did before. We're actually adding it back in. So if you think back to before, oh, excuse me. Um, if you think back to before, to get rid of the K, what did you do? You had to multiply by a thousand, okay? So remember that K stands for kilo or kilo. And that's the same as a thousand or times by a thousand. So if you want to add it back in, you've got to do the opposite, which means you divide by a thousand, right? Now, the easiest way to remember this is don't try and remember everything I've told you there just now. Just remember that if you're getting rid of K, you times by a thousand. So if you're adding it back in, you do the opposite, you divide by a thousand. So just remember, that adding, uh, getting rid of K, you times by a thousand, and to get rid of it, or sorry, to add it back in, you just do the opposite, and then that way you won't get confused. Okay. So here again are three examples. Now by this stage, if you're pretty confident, which you should be, or I hope so anyhow, 
feel free to pause the video and just try these yourselves. I'll go over the answers with you step by step. So for the first one, 490, remember we're adding the K, so we've got to divide by 1,000. So that would just be 490 divided by 1,000, which is 0 0.49 kg. And notice how I've got the units there because the units tell me what quantity it is that I'm talking about. The second one, same process again. You're just dividing by 1,000 because we're adding the K. So it's 2.46 kilogram. Um, and then the final one is the same process. But notice how our number is a wee bit longer now because we've got an extra uh, place in our uh, number here. OK, a wee top tip for you folks. Remember, there are more grams than there are kilograms. So if you're converting to kilograms, your number should always be smaller than your original one. And you can see here in each case, our number 246, 2.46 is smaller than 2460. 0 0.7906 is smaller than 790.6. So we know we're on the right track. And that's it, folks. Make sure you really know how to do these two conversions. And then we're going to crack into the physics next week.